Oh, my favorite thing has occurred. I have convinced I was able to convince an industrial company to send me a new, very expensive toy. I mean, tool. This thing here is the Einscan Pro 2X V2, and it's going to allow us to 3D scan things that, well, we could scan before. It was just a huge pain in the air. This makes it so much easier. By the way, it doesn't come in this box. We put it in this just to make sure that it stays safe when we're moving it between the sets and stuff. The first thing we've got in here isn't the scanner itself, but the fastest laptop that we could find pretty much because the system requirements for this thing are off the charts. It's recommended to have a minimum of 32 gigabytes of RAM, an i7-8700 and a 1060. Now we have greatly exceeded that. This right here has 64 gigabytes of RAM. I think a 3080 or something like that. Anyway, this thing is wicked, wicked fast because this thing oh, uses so, so much RAM. <laughs> it actually stores your entire model as a point cloud, as it scans in your system RAM, which goes really fast and works really well if you have a computer such as this one, and not so much if your computer is a bit more like this. This is made by Shining 3D. They make a whole bunch of different scanners, but we think that the Einscan Pro 2X is probably the sweet spot. You can get cheaper scanners, but in our experience, those kind of, they're just a bit janky. They're kind of hard to use. It's nowhere near as fast as my personal favorite 3D scanner. These guys right here and some 3D modeling. That said though, it took me about five minutes to learn how to use this thing and it's already just so freaking fast and easy. I absolutely love it. Also in the box, we get this right here, which pairs with this guy right here. This is a calibration plate so that we can make sure that every single time that we 3D scan stuff, it's gonna be real nice and accurate. We have a switching power adapter from FSP. This guy right here is good for 60 watts delivered over a barrel jack. Also a little phone mount. So if you want to mount your phone onto this guy right here, you can do that so you don't have to be looking over at your laptop to see how your scan is going in. And finally in here, we have got some markers. These things are for when you have say a really large flat surface like the back of a computer case, you can put a bunch of markers on it so that your 3D scan doesn't lose where it's at. If you have something that has a whole bunch of features like Buzz Lightyear here, it can pretty easily see like, okay, that's there as you're moving along, it's tracking this point and making sure that everything lines up from frame to frame. Whereas if you have just a big flat object, it can be a lot more difficult for it to figure out where exactly it is, which is when you use these markers. For power and data on the Einscan, they actually have this really interesting way of doing it. If you look at the USB cable, it's both a USB cable and a power cable. So this plugs into your computer right uh, there. And then we have their barrel jack, which plugs in right there. And now it's on. All right, let's do another calibration. This is partially just so you guys can see it. We did a calibration yesterday, but also when you change environments and lighting and stuff like that, it's best to just go and rip another calibration and that way you know it's all working just fine and it's really fast too. So we're going to just come in right here. I'm just pointing the square at the spot in the middle and we are now good. I now need to take it and like he's showing on the screen there, attach it to this exactly like that. Now we just do that again. We're going to press the play button up on top and just move away a little bit. Now we rotate it 90 degrees. Do that again, four times. Now we have three options for scans in here. The first is the fixed scan. Now we do have the turntable on the way, which is fantastic for if you want to really accurately 3D scan a small model. But at the same time, if we have a small model, I'm probably just going to chuck it in the Luma field and do it that way. Most people are not cross shopping on scans and Luma fields, but we have both. Since we're not doing a fixed scan, we can go and choose between HD scans or rapid scans. The main difference is that the HD scan is going to be scanning at 10 FPS, whereas the rapid is at 30. You do sacrifice some of your detail by doing the rapid scan, but that's what we're gonna do right now. Name, Buzz Lightyear. 
Now it's asking here how we want to do our mode of alignment. So that's how it figures out from frame to frame what those different like 2D-ish images turn into in 3D as you move around. Markers we showed off before, those are for more like large flat surfaces, but Buzz Lightyear has loads of little tiny features, so we're just gonna use that. I think medium resolution is just fine. That's one millimeter, but if we wanna go all the way down to 0.2 of a millimeter, we can, but we're just gonna go fast right here. We've got our nice scanning platform here. It's a Home Depot bucket covered in duvetine. You can chuck Buzz right on the top here. And there's only one more thing that we have to do before we can start our scan. And that's tell you about today's sponsor. Circuit specialists. Are you looking for electronic components and equipment? Circuit Specialists provides tools and supplies to the STEM community at competitive prices. You can explore their wide range of offerings, including resistors, capacitors, soldering stations, oscilloscopes, and more. And by leveraging their technology and sourcing expertise, their goal is to give customers access to tools and parts that may otherwise be prohibitively expensive or outright unavailable. Their commitment to quality ensures that you receive reliable and high performance products that are suited for your needs. So don't wait, let circuit specialists help you upgrade your electronics toolkit. And by checking them out at the link down below and using code LMG, you can save 10%. So there's our preview. As you can see on the left, what we want is to set the brightness correctly. When it gets too bright, everything turns red. That means that we're not doing so good. We won't be able to capture the detail. We turn it down too much and same sort of thing. We don't have enough brightness. We want to turn it up just until there's a little bit of red in our image and that's where it's going to be perfect. Now, if I'm honest, I'm not 100% sure how this works, but what I believe is happening is that it's blasting a pattern from the center right here and then it's using the cameras here and here and the difference stereoscopically between the two is how it does math and figures out how far away something is. All right, let's start some scanning. Oh, this thing works so well. I'm, I'm basically just painting in Buzz now, going around him, checking that the scan's working there. One thing that does happen from time to time is if I move away from him, the tracking will be lost. And the thing that this scanner in particular is really, really good at is getting its tracking back in the right spot. Like, look, right there. It's just right back on it and going again. I've had a lot of trouble in the past with other scanners where if you just simply go and lose some tracking, when you come back on, it'll just start adding stuff in the complete wrong spot, which is really not fantastic. One thing that you guys might be noticing is that it's having some trouble picking up his belt right here. That's because it's black. 3D scanners really don't like stuff that's super dark or super shiny because it's using cameras to figure out where the stuff is and if the camera doesn't see anything, it does not scan it. One thing also, if we get too close, you'll see that this turns red. And if we get too far away, it turns blue. So it's really nice to have an indicator right here that I am at the correct distance when it is green. Let's continue going around Buzz here. We're almost done. And I think that's about as good as we're gonna get right now. All right, now before we head on, I just wanna get rid of some junk. So we got a little bit of our Home Depot bucket. Goodbye. I'm just shift clicking to select the stuff. Goodbye. You know, you don't have to get rid of the stuff right now. You can do it later but it's just a little bit easier if you don't even have to worry about post-processing. You can just, just delete all of that. I accidentally selected some of my actual models so I can control click, circle that, bring it back. Now delete the stuff that I don't want and I think we're about good. I'm just going to hit generate point clouds and it should look a lot better. Now I just need to select between an unwatertight and watertight models. So that's just the difference between it filling in these areas where I didn't quite get something scanned. We're just gonna go watertight and see how well it does. That is pretty darn good. Given that we just super quickly did this while I wasn't even really paying attention to the scan, I was paying attention to presenting. This is a very, very usable model. Look, look at him, just, just look at Buzzy Buzz. He looked great. Now we can just save them here. I'm going to do a .stl and you can open that up in SolidWorks or Fusion 360 or whatever 3D modeling software you prefer. The next thing we want to scan is this PC case. Now, as we talked about earlier, stuff that is shiny and stuff that is black can cause problems. And as you can see, stuff is either shiny or black. 
so we need to do a little bit to get around that. First thing we're going to do is place down markers. Now you want to put these down not in a pattern. They're supposed to be organized such that they sort of just are existing there. If you have them in specific patterns, it can get confused between like, oh, is it this pattern of four or that pattern of four or that pattern of four? Don't do that. Just have them be completely random and it will be much happier. Now that we've given our case, the case of the chicken pox, we can go and get rid of those dark and shiny areas using this stuff right here, which is scanning spray. If you want, you can just use chalk or your feet smell powder or stuff like that. But the nice thing about this is that it auto vanishes. It just kind of evaporates after a couple of hours. How good that is for you? I don't know, but it smells pretty bad. There we go. Cool. All right, let's see how well this works. I did try this yesterday with no markers and with no spray and it just didn't really work, which is expected. One thing to note is that you want to get as perpendicular as you can. You want to be scanning your stuff kind of like this. You don't want to be doing it like that. While we're scanning this, just some basic speeds and feeds. So this thing right here is an accuracy of up to 0.045 millimeters, which is really fricking small. It also has a volumetric accuracy of 0.3 millimeters per meter with markers alignment. And it, right now it is scanning at 10 FPS, although we did do 30 before. And one thing that you might have noticed is that we're only capturing 3D data and no textures, but that is an option if you want. There is a texture upgrade and that just goes in right oh, here. As you can see, there's a little USB header. So you plug in the camera there, it locks in, and then you can do full color and get those nice textures on your 3D models right out of the scan. Although for the most part, we're not super concerned about that. What we wanna be doing is getting computer cases like this one into SolidWorks as quickly as we can so we can do just bonkers stuff to it. We'll finish up the scan of the computer case later. It's taking a fair while and I wanna to get to some other stuff. As you can see here though, we looked at it in post and it did a fantastic job. Good job, Justin, thanks for doing that. Speaking of Justin, he is the one that really pushed for us to get the Einscan Pro 2X specifically. He has used this in the past as a prop maker to scan a whole bunch of famous people like Nick Cage, Rachida Jones, and I'm going to be joining him in scanning famous people. Bell, get over here. I'm glad my mustache will be captured in 3D. <laughs> if it tells you I'm too dark, it's racist. Look at that. It works really, really well on people. They have so many unique features. We can just go right around them here. And if you're like a prop maker or someone like that, this can be incredibly useful so that you can 3D scan someone in and make sure that you have a nearly perfect model of them in 3D so you can print off like prosthetics and stuff like that to make them all freaky looking or nice, I guess, if you want. Bell definitely would be in a horror movie though. <laughs> it's actually super fast at scanning people. This is the easiest scan that I've done so far by a lot. Oh, I need to get the top of his head. Feeling that beak there. This feeling weird yet? Mm-hmm. <laughs> good. No, I think that's about good. That looks, oh, that looks eyes. great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not something you want to be doing if you are one with the epilepsy. But look at that bell that we have right there. Uh, I can't wait for my, uh, my deep fake you're going to make with that. Okay, mesh model watertight quality, high quality, only the highest of qualities for Bell. That is really quite good. Given how quick and dirty that scan was, we have done an excellent job, I think. There are some spots that I clearly missed, like I didn't get right up underneath his cap and I didn't realize that I missed a tiny bit of the top, but at the same time, like it very clearly got the LTT logo on the top and come in here. All of this should be really accurate. So if we wanted to make something to put on Bell's head or something like that, we very easily could. For how quick that was, I think this scan is really fricking good. We can now 3D print ourselves off a whole bunch of little mini Bells and 
chuck them around the office. It's gonna be fantastic. We have so much stuff planned for this thing right here. I cannot wait to like 3D scan the back of Ploof's car and just do some really stupid stuff to it. If you want to say put a subwoofer in an awkward spot in your trunk, you can just scan it with this, make sure it fits in nice and perfectly. We're going to be just scanning loads and loads of computer cases with this thing to make sure that we can, you know, custom mod it in ways that are just really, really perfect. And I'm just shocked at how easy this thing is to use. Now it is expensive. This thing right here is around $5,000, which is not cheap. But at the same time, I have in the past used the cheap ones and I have always found that they are just worse than not having a 3D scanner. So it's kind of a weird price jump between you either use your iPhone and a pair of calipers and then you go straight up to this guy right here and oh my god, this thing works really freaking well and I cannot wait to just 3D scan everything or CT scan it. We, we have both now. We're going to have some incredible projects for you in the near future. Just like you viewer are incredible. Huge thanks for watching, hit like, get subscribed, and I really hope that that garbage truck stops making so much noise it didn't. See you later.